Welcome. My name is Rita Lerner, and I am the daughter of two Holocaust survivors. My mother, Henny Dermashkin Gurko, was a survivor of the Vilna Ghetto and Dachau. My father, Simon Gurko, survived in Siberia. I have been part of this commemoration for over 33 years and have seen it grow to include the participation of the third generation and now the fourth generation. Together, we honor the memory of all survivors who have passed away, leaving us to carry on their great legacy. This year marks the third year of our virtual format gathering of remembrance, and it allows us to be joined by survivors, descendants, partners, and participants from all over the world. It is our obligation to remember those that we lost. The Museum of Jewish Heritage, a living memorial to the Holocaust, will always be in the forefront of this important observance. On behalf of the museum, we are grateful for you joining us today. Together, we will honor our Kedoshim who perished in the Holocaust. Before our program begins, let me thank the staff of the Museum of Jewish Heritage for their efforts in creating this virtual commemoration. Thank you, Rita, for your beautiful words. I echo our thanks to our staff, our volunteers, to Temple Emanuel, and to all those who were involved in creating this event. And a special thanks to the survivors and to the second, third, and ongoing generations of their descendants. Thank you to all in our audience for watching this annual gathering of remembrance. At its core, this event is for and about the six million and those who survived. We particularly want to welcome those survivors and families who are joining us today. The two pillars of the mission of the museum have always been remembrance and education. Remembrance of those who were lost, and those who survived, and the education of future generations. As the president and CEO of the museum, it is my honor to guide this institution as we now enter our 25th year and prepare to open our new core exhibition, The Holocaust, What Hate Can Do, this June. It has been and remains our pledge to the survivors that here in New York, there will always be a place where your grandchildren's grandchildren can come to visit, to learn, and to teach our history and our heritage. Today, we remember and commemorate the six million and those who survived, their sacrifices, their resilience, and their essential role in the renewal of the Jewish people. Thank you all for joining in today's program.
Rabbi Nachman of Bratslav told a story about a king known for his wisdom, compassion, and integrity. Beloved by his subjects, he was envied by a wizard who sought to do him harm. And so this wizard placed a curse on the kingdom's harvest. Anyone who ate of it during a period of seven years would go mad. In the king's court, there was a prophet who learned of the wizard's devious act and informed the king, who convened his advisors to recommend a course of action. They decided to have all the uncontaminated produce stored up from years past weighed to determine how long it would last, whether it would feed the kingdom seven years. Alas, there was only enough to feed one person for seven years. The prophet turned to his king and said, Your majesty, you must eat the untainted food so that you can continue to lead the people. No, answered the king. If I am to lead the people, I must understand them. And to understand them, I must remain a part of them. If they become mad, so must I. You, you will be the one. You will eat the uncontaminated grain, and you will travel the land to remind the people that their behavior is not true to the best within them, but rather the result of the cursed harvest. Reluctantly, the prophet accepted his lonely mission. As the rest of the kingdom ate of the tainted grain and slipped slowly into madness, the prophet journeyed from one town to the next, reminding the people that their wicked behavior was the result of the curse, that they need not act in such corrupt and unethical ways. Remember how you used to be, the prophet cried. In one town, a man approached the prophet and asked him, if what you say is true, that our behavior is a result of the curse on the harvest, and that we are bound to behave this way, why do you continue to speak out? You know your words will come to no avail. I speak, answered the prophet, because perhaps before you act, you will remember the difference between right and wrong, and that the power of choice remains yours. But even if you do not, I will continue to speak out because by doing so, I remind myself of the difference and prevent myself from becoming like you. I remind myself that the world need not be this way. Very well, responded the townsman. Continue on your mission. Perhaps one day we will awaken from this curse and join you. Dear friends, there are those who would deny, obscure, forget, or wish others to forget the tragedy done our people we mark today. And there are increasing numbers in America who are woefully ignorant of it and its causes. While we are rightly concerned about the impact of Holocaust denial, such ignorance may well lead us to the same frightening outcomes. At a concerning moment of rising anti-Semitism in America, manifest in hateful graffiti, vandalized synagogues, attacks in the street, and of course the assault on Congregation Beth Israel in Colleyville, Texas, we must never stop speaking the truth, never stop telling the stories of the survivors, never stop bearing witness. And perhaps one day the world will awaken and join us. See you.
Hello, I'm Bruce Ratner, and I am the chairman of the Museum of Jewish Heritage, a living memorial to the Holocaust. Thank you for being here today and for joining us for the annual gathering of remembrance. It is so special to be joined by so many people from all over the world, especially survivors and their families. Welcome all. The annual gathering of remembrance is the museum's longest standing tradition and one that I'm proud to be part of, and it's one that we have continued for so many years. Remembrance is a key building block of a museum and an integral part of our mission to educate future generations about the Holocaust. As Elie Wiesel once said, when you listen to a witness, you become a witness. And it is our duty as witnesses to continue to tell the stories of the Holocaust so that we can teach future generations. As we enter into our 25th anniversary, we remain focused on remembrance in addition to resilience, renewal, and of course, education. Thank you all for being here today. My name is Sophie Perrins, and I am here on behalf of my grandfather, Dr. Henry Perrins. He recently passed away, but he would have been so honored and happy to know that this was happening. So I'm very happy to be here in his place. Um, my Zeta, as I called him, escaped from the Holocaust when he was 12 years old and came to America as a preteen. And with the generosity of strangers, the Wagner family and the Steinfurs family, he was taken in and given the resources and love and care that he needed to be able to start new 
to start over um, in the States and was able to go to medical school and became a globally recognized psychoanalyst who worked in the prevention of prejudice and war and large group conflict. He developed a um, model for parenting education, which he made widely accessible. He really prioritized helping kids, kids who had been traumatized, hoping to help them when they were young so that they could have the chance he did. I can tell you things that you've been learning about, but that I experienced. So I can bring to you something that you won't get otherwise. But I'm grateful that you guys are here because I need you guys, right? You're the new generation. What happened to me will happen again, unless people like you take on the responsibility of doing something so that it not happen again. It's an absolute honor to celebrate his legacy and his life, and I hope that we can all learn from him and be inspired by him. And that's why I made the film about him, to celebrate his life and to be able to share him with people far and wide because I was very, very privileged to know him and be loved by him. So I hope that I'm able to share that with my film, also called Zeta. I'm a Holocaust survivor. I think the future lies in our children. Oh, and let me also add, by the way, that I have a family, and my wife is totally responsible for that, which is the greatest gift I've ever had. Hi, everyone. It's Senator Chuck Schumer, and it's my honor once again to participate in the annual gathering of remembrance hosted by the Museum of Jewish Heritage. As we all know, the Museum of Jewish Heritage is an indispensable repository of history and culture. The museum gives voice to the victims of the Holocaust who cannot speak for themselves and whose memory calls down to us through the decades for justice. This is a matter close to my heart because many of my ancestors were wiped out by the Nazis in Galicia. What was once a thriving Jewish community was eradicated overnight. This may feel like distant history to others, but the atrocities happening right now in Ukraine, in Myanmar, and in Yemen, and elsewhere around the world are a reminder of mankind's terrifying capacity for evil. We're seeing it right now, and once again, it breaks our heart and astounds us. We have moral responsibility to make sure the Holocaust's terrible stains on humanity never fade from memory, because we must still reckon with what happened and because genocide that's not properly told can lead to another. It's the cruel reality of the world that every year more Holocaust survivors pass away. I'd like to take a moment to honor the survivors we lost in 2021 by reading a few of their names. Madeleine Albright, Yitzhak Arad, Julie Obaka, Jack Feldman, Bella Granick, Helen Grau, Paula Gruber, Ruth Gruner, Roman Kent, Jack Michalinzer, Ruth Pergersky, Henry Parents, Henry Wretches, Pleasure Rub, and Saul Erbach. We owe it to these survivors, to their families, and indeed to the whole world to continue bearing witness to the tragic leg legacy of the Holocaust and repeating our conviction over and over again. And it's our prayer too, never again. Schleimelach, 
spielen sich mehr mit kein Sorrelach leihlach, nicht auf kein Gräselach, nicht auf kein Schneelach. Schön mir nicht die jüdische Stimme lach, von die Kundeisen lach, Mathe lach, Schimmel lach. Mit die zerkrellte, zertrappte Zure lach, von den Beweisen, von der im Why do you feel that it's important to share the story of what happened to you during the Holocaust? Well, the important thing is that people know and learn that there was a Holocaust. Um, because there are many people who are so-called Holocaust deniers. Also, there are people who just never heard of it. And it is very important that uh, particularly young people learn and um, remember so it won't happen again. Why do you think that it's important for the Holocaust to be remembered? Well, for the same reason, because if we don't remember the Holocaust, we don't know that it happened. It's uh, easier to have it happen again because we can point to the time 
and the events that happened in the Holocaust and, and say to people, look, you can't do this. You can't uh, discriminate. You can be anti-Semitic because it killed 6 million people, innocent people. So it should be remembered. Also, it should be remembered for all those six million who had died. When you tell your story to other people, what do you find most meaningful about that part? Well, there's a scene that comes to my mind. I don't talk about it, but whenever I talk about the event uh, that I had to participate in, which was called the Eichmann Death March, it was a march of 50,000 Budapest Jews on the highway to a German uh, concentration camp. And many people from our building were participating in this march as were we. And uh, one young woman who was a friend of mine in the building, but younger, she was about 13 years old at the time. And she marched with uh, her grandparents. And um, her grandfather was a very tall, big man. And uh, my friend was a young little girl. And uh, she was scolded. So the grandfather took his coat off and put it on her. But the coat was so huge that as she was walking on the highway, uh, the bottom of the coat was sweeping the asphalt of the highway. And that's how she marched with holding the hands of her grandparents. But I always remember that scene of her going in, in marching in this huge, huge coat. Unfortunately, they were all taken to the, like uh, I would have also, at the, to the Mount Helsin concentration camp, and they all died. It's really terrible. For the future generations listening to you, um, if you had one thing that you could tell them, like one thing specifically, what would it be? Uh, when I talk to young people, I always tell them that they should learn about each other's religion because I made a terrible mistake through my entire school years, although I was in school with non-Jewish kids as well in the same class, but I never had a non-Jewish friend. And that's a terrible mistake. What I tell young people, make sure you get to learn about other kids' religions. Because the Nazi propaganda was that the Jews were an inferior race. Now, if you are a Catholic girl and you have a Jewish friend whom you hang out with, you have sleepovers with, you have secrets with, and you really love each other, that propaganda would never have succeeded. So what I tell schools when I talk to them, learn about each other's religion and respect it. When did you start telling your story? Unfortunately, I didn't start it sooner, but I started it um, a few years ago when I got involved with the Museum of Jewish Heritage. They have a speaker's bureau of uh, sur uh, Holocaust survivors. And I joined that. And through them, I felt like I got to know you. So why did you start telling your story? Why did you just choose to start? 
Well, um, I realize that how important it is. And unfortunately, our times are very ripe for people to know about the Holocaust because there is a rising uh, anti-Semitism, not just in this country, but all over the world. And uh, it's, so it becomes more and more important. And the other reason is that there's no Holocaust survivor who can talk about their experience who is not over 80 years old. So we are not going to be around. That's why what you're doing is so important. So we can be witnesses and you are recording it. Thank you so much for speaking with me. I'm, I'm delighted and I congratulate you. And I think you are just marvelous. Thank you. I'm very privileged to have met you. As Israel's Consul General in New York, it is an honor for me to be here with you all virtually as we prepare to mark Yom HaShoah later this week. During the Holocaust, six million Jewish people were systematically beaten, tortured, starved, and gassed to death. And while no event in history or any other conflict can ever be compared to the genocide and ethnic cleansing committed by Nazi Germany, we must rededicate ourselves today and redouble our efforts as a community to honor the memory of these victims and to ensure that such atrocities never happen again. Here in New York, a melting pot of diversity, culture and tradition, the Jewish community continues to witness an alarming rise in anti-Semitism and anti-Semitic incidents. Not only have anti-Semitic incidents quadrupled in the last year across all five boroughs, but in the last month alone, a 21-year-old Hasidic male was assaulted in Williamsburg, a bomb threat was made against the JCC of Staten Island. Six Jewish boys were threatened with a machete in the Upper West Side. And assaults were reported against Jews in Crown Heights and Soho. Moreover, Jewish students are being targeted and intimidated on campus at frightening levels, solely because of their identity and their natural love for Israel. Such blatant displays of anti-Semitism cannot be tolerated any longer. I call on New Yorkers of all faiths, traditions, and backgrounds to stand shoulder to shoulder with the Jewish community during this concerning time in history and help usher in a future of coexistence and mutual respect. Friends, with very few Holocaust survivors still living who can bear witness to the immense tragedy of the Shoah, education of our youth, young adults, educators and leaders, becomes all that more important. This begins with galvanizing widespread support for both the IRA working definition of anti-Semitism and of Holocaust denial and distortion, as well as ensuring the phrase never again remains more than a mere talking point. This duty falls on all of us. While Yom HaShoah is a day of remembrance, reflection and sorrow, we must also remember that the Jewish people have survived thrived and remained resilient throughout a very dark history, including expulsion from our homeland, pogroms, the Inquisition, blood libels, demonization and hate. Not only are all Jewish people an eternal people, but we now have the modern day state of Israel that will always be a safe haven for Jewish people everywhere and act as our defender against all those that seek our destruction. Am Israel Chai, the Jewish people live on.
thank you for coming together to remember the six million Jews who perished during the Holocaust and the millions more murdered by the Nazis. Thank you for keeping their, their stories alive, stories of suffering and persistence, stories that teach us about the strength and dignity of those who had to endure this dark chapter in human history. This past fall, I had the honor of rekindling the eternal flame in the Hall of Remembrance at Yad Vashem in Jerusalem. It was a moment that moved me beyond words. And it was a reminder of the awesome responsibility that we have to live up to the sacred promise, never again. In this spirit, it is incumbent on all of us to do everything in our power to confront and push back against the alarming spikes in anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial around the world, including sadly here in the United States. That same commitment to embody the words never again necessitates a powerful response to the unspeakable brutality and violence currently taking place in Ukraine where shelling by Putin's forces have killed thousands of civilians, including a 96-year-old Holocaust survivor. And in other conflicts and regions across the globe, from Burma's genocide against Rohingya Muslims to China's ongoing genocide against Uyghurs in Xinjiang. I want to leave you with one final thought. In December, I had the chance to come to the Museum of Jewish Heritage to dedicate the children's tree, which is a descendant of a tree that a Jewish teacher, imprisoned in a concentration camp, planted and nurtured with the help of a group of Jewish children. After liberation, the survivors placed these words under the tree. As the branches of this tree, so the branches of our people. I know the Jewish people will continue to branch out and thrive for generations to come. Zog nit kein mal as du geist dem letzten Feg, hat Himmeln bleien er verstellen die neue Tag. Kommen wird noch unser euch gebänkte Schau. Das Wetter beugt an uns, er tut mir seinen Tor. Kommen wird noch unser euch gebänkte Schau. Das Wetter beugt an uns, er tut mir seinen Tor. Von grünem Palmenland bis weißen Land von Schnee. Wir kommen an mit unser Pein, mit unser Weh. Und du gefangst es, ich spritz von unser Blut. Schwarz und fett dort unser Kurre, unser Mut. Es wird die Morgen von uns dem Heint. Und der Nächten wird verschwinden mit dem Feind. Nur euch versammeln wird die Sonne in dem Kajol. Wir Aperol so gehen das Lied von Dorn zu Dorn. Das Lied geschrieben. Mit Blut und nicht mit Blei. Es ist nicht kein Liebe von der Vögel auf der Frei. Das hat der Volk zwischen Fahnen die gewähnt. Das Lied gesungen mit einer Kanas in die Hand. Das hat der Volk zwischen Fahnen die gewähnt. Das Lied gesungen mit einer Kanas in die Hand. Das sagt nicht kein Mal, als du gehst dem letzten Weg. Gott schimmeln bleien, er verstellen die neue Tag. Kommen wird noch unser euch gewängte Schau. Es wird erbeugt von uns, er tut mir seinen Tag. Kommen wird noch unser euch gewängte Schau. Es wird erbeugt von uns, er tut mir seinen Tag.
My name is Alyssa Greengrass, and I am the granddaughter of Steffi and Charles Greengrass, who survived Bergen-Belsen and Auschwitz. I am honored to participate in this year's annual gathering of remembrance and to introduce the candle lighting, where six candles are lit as reminders of the six million Jews who perished in the Holocaust. My name is Elise Ann Urbach Listener, and all four of my grandparents were Holocaust survivors. My family is fortunate to still have my grandmother, Ada Urbach, with us. We gather and light candles to remember those who died, honor those who survived, and to learn and teach about what happened to ensure that it will never happen again. In a few moments, we will begin our candle lighting ceremony. Six Holocaust survivors will dedicate their candle to those they are remembering today. My name is Alyssa Rosen, and I am remembering my grandma Hannah, who survived the Czestochowa ghetto, and my grandpa Abe, who survived Auschwitz. As each survivor tells us who they are remembering, people of younger generations will strike the match and light the candle, symbolically showing the necessary continuation of Holocaust remembrance. My name is Rachel Cerati, and I am remembering my grandmother, Hannah Dubova, who was saved by the kindness of strangers. My name is Jace Bernhardt. I'm the grandson of Susan Rose Davis, who survived the Riga ghetto and Sudhoff concentration camp. Every year at the annual gathering, people of all ages come together to say, we will never forget. Each of us from our homes gather virtually, knowing that we are united in this mission. My name is Melissa Berger, and I am the granddaughter of two Holocaust survivors. I have been involved with the Young Friends of the Museum of Jewish Heritage for the last eight years, and I'm also a member of the committee that put together today's program. We invite you to join us in lighting a candle in remembrance, and we thank you for being a part of this year's annual gathering of remembrance. My name is Doreen Grunbaum, and I was born in Rotterdam, Holland on August 28, 1942. A month after my first birthday, my parents, my grandmother and I were picked up and deported, first to Vesterborg transit camp and later to Bergen-Belsen. We were liberated by Russian soldiers from what was known as the Lost Transport in Trebitz, East Germany on, in April 1945. And we were among the 5% of Dutch Jews who returned to Holland. However, my parents chose to leave for many reasons, and we then immigrated to the U.S. the following year. I say immigrated because my father had been offered a job in New York by his former employer, who had left before the occupation of Holland. My sister, Judith Ann Grunbaum, was born in Brooklyn on September 18, 1947. My parents and grandmother always reminded me that my presence in the camps had saved them, because I gave them the need and the will to survive. But I later understood that they had protected me there by making me feel secure and always by always being with me. My sister, on the other hand, felt apart, as if she had been excluded from the foundation of our family. As a result, she suffered from emotional problems that she spent her life unraveling. But she was also a gifted artist and a brilliant academic who earned degrees in filmmaking, teaching, and an EDD in public policy from Harvard. She was complicated and beautiful and creative, and she died too young of cancer in February 2018. So I dedicate this candle to my sister Judy, who is with me every day. We light this candle in memory of Saul Urban. Saul endured and survived three concentration camps. He was the sole survivor of his family. Saul was rescued and given a chance at life by righteous Gentile Oscar Schindler. Saul, who recently died at the age of 96, did more than survive. He built a successful construction business and a wonderful family. We are here today with his wife, Ada. Ada and Saul met in a DP camp in Germany after the war. They were married for 71 years. Ada is standing with her daughter, Barbara Listener, who is representing her brother, David Urbach, and her brother, Henry Urbach, of blessed memory. 
Ada is also alongside her granddaughter, Elise Lesner, who is representing her brother, her cousins, and Ada and Saul's six great grandchildren. After having been a prisoner for so long in his youth, it's not surprising that Saul spent most of his adult life in the outdoors. He was a master carpenter and a builder, and the homes and buildings which he built brick by brick symbolize his strength and endurance. We miss you. My name is Irvin Forley. I was born in Kosice, Czechoslovakia. I lived in Munkac, Czechoslovakia first, and then Hungary. About 30,000 inhabitants in Munkac. Um, less than half were Jews and 10% survived. March 18, the Germans came in, occupied Hungary, Munkac, and within two months, we were taken to a ghetto. And then from the ghetto, we were taken to Auschwitz. And, um, and we were, and my, where my father, brother, grandfather, two grandmothers, 14 uncles and aunts, many cousins, friends were murdered just because they were Jewish. It is in their memory, I'm lighting the candle. I also want to say that I came to the US in 1946. My name is Paula Weissman. I was born in Velky Berezny, which is Czechoslovakia. In 1944, the Nazis came they took me and my family to Auschwitz, and that's the last time I ever saw my family. The next thing I know, I wound up in Hamburg working on a working detail, and I was there till the end of the war. Next thing you know, I found myself in bergen belsen starving, very hungry, and very, and I, I was laying in the street. The English army came, they picked me up, they put me on a stretcher, they took me to a hospital. This is the time when I wanna light a candle for my father, Marcus, for my mother, Hermina, and for my brother, Leopold. My name is Alice Ginsberg and I'm a Holocaust survivor. In 1944, the Nazis invaded Munkac, my hometown, uh, which was Hungary at a time. It became Hungary just before that. Um, soon the Nazis we were told to go into the ghetto and spending a few weeks there, we were mobilized into cattle cars, which took us to Auschwitz, where I was torn away from my mother, little sister, and extended family. From Auschwitz, we were brought to two other concentration camps where we performed slave labor. I also went through the long ex infamous death march. After liberation, it met a lot of people that were leaving camps and I found out that my father and brother survived. So I went home to find them, but they weren't there. I went to my house, the strangers were occupying it, but I found out that my uncles are nearby. And from the uncles, I found out that my father and brother are in Budapest. They were in a hospital with typhoid fever. 
after that, I went to the hut to Budapest to meet them. And we ended up in a displaced person camp in Bavaria, Leipzig, Bavaria. We were there for two years. And from there, we immigrated to the United States. I would like to light a candle for my mother, Zibia, my little sister, my 90 year old, nine year old little sister, who were both killed in the gas chambers, along with my two grandmothers, uncles, aunts, and lots of cousins. My name is Henry Larringer. I was born in Antwerp, Belgium in 1931. And I dedicate this candle, the remembrance candle to my mother, who with her strength and spirit took us through the war to arrive in the United States at the end of 1941. My name is Yehuda Lindenblatt. I'm born March 21st, 1937. The German walked into Hungary March 19, 1944, three days my seventh birthday. The German occupation of Hungary was nine months. This nine months, that was a misery, and sometimes it's unhappiness. I see many dead, tremendous amount of dead. My grandfather, who was a hero, shaved, cut his beard, went to save Jews. They catch them one day and kill them and throw them to the mighty river of the Danube. My friend, 99 years old Holocaust survivor, Jack Mikulenser. We was going to the synagogue and he hit the bike car. I saw him to fly. This Kaddish, what I'm gonna say, it's for the people who the, who, the, who the Nazis, no matter what country, the, the Arrow Cross killed, the Hungarian Arrow Cross killed for them. And Jack, who was a hero of the Holocaust, he was, the, uh, he was a Russian soldier and a Holocaust survivor. Iskadal ve iskadashem e rabu. Ve olmo divro huse ve marchet he. Ve chaye chunu be ya chaye chunu be he. Ve chol beit Israel. Ve gola bezman kariv ve imru omen. Ve he shme raba me vorach le olme olmaya. Izborach ve shtabach ve it poar ve it romam ve it nase ve het adel ve tane ve tale shem e de kucho brichu. Belomin kol brachata vshirata tishbachata, nechamata da miram belma vim romen, he shlomo rabo min shamayim vchaim, tovim olen val kol israel vim romen, o se sholam vim romav, hu yasa shalom alenu vial kol israel vim ru, amen. Hey, let 
עמים. שוכן במרומים, דיין על אמונויס, ואבי יסוימים. וסיספק לדם ייסר אוהב שנשפך כמים. המצאי מנוחה נכוינו Oh. 
This marks the end of our commemoration. On behalf of the Museum of Jewish Heritage, a living memorial to the Holocaust, stay safe and well, and thank you for joining us. We were